Hey y'all, it's Natalie. And today we are kicking off a new series on my channel with Sarah Scraps on her channel. We are starting with Color First. That's the name of the series. So we have that mood board you just saw. And um, we are starting with the color first and deciding our layout based on that. So I'm using all those really bright, beautiful, what I call jewel tones. I don't really know if that's the right term, but that's what I thought of when I uh, saw that photo and all the colors in it. So I have this gessoed white cardstock, clear gesso, and I found the center of the page with my T-square ruler. And now I'm using this circle die from Pink Fresh Studio to create a grid. Um, so I'm doing nine circles in a grid around the page using that center circle as my guide. I'm using a white gel pen to mark them out and it's hard to see on camera but you could see it in person better. Um, so my idea is that I'm going to create circles of watercolor and then um, additional circles to pop up over the circles on the background paper, if that makes sense. So right now what I'm doing is creating on a piece of watercolor paper, just a swatch of one of the colors that I'm going to use to color around the circle. And I will use that to die cut an additional circle. Don't ask me why I started with pink and not started with pink. It's because I messed up a background paper and I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> so I had to redo all of my grid. But anyway, I have this color that I built up with um, the blue and um, red color burst. And so I made it like this eggplanty purple. And honestly, it's probably not exactly the right purple color, but um, it does look purple in person and it was nice and honestly this um mood board isn't going to be next to the final layout um like in my album so it'll just look like a nice color combination you won't know that it's not the exact right purple color so now i'm going to mix the blue and i'm using um brush -os. and the actual blue color that is in there as long as you don't dilute it too much was the perfect blue color that was from that mood board so as you can see i'm just using the different colors to go around those white circles that i drew and just create creating like a messy circular um, palette or um, anchor that's going to be and then on top of it I'm going to lay the same color circle die cut so that's why I'm picking up the rest of that color with the watercolor paper to use to die cut this the additional circle and then that is not quite blue enough so I added additional brushes to that and added some more water just to make it the really deep, deep, rich blue color. And I set all those on a tray from my like tiered rolling cart um, to dry. Now um, there's only six colors on the mood board. So some of them will be done twice. So I did the purple twice and I'm gonna do the, um, the pink twice. And I think I do the orange twice, but that is like um, a shimmering, powder from Nuvo and I think the color is called Cherry Bomb and then I'm going to do this bright yellow color in the middle and so you can see me kind of working around that purple color because while I don't mind if they mix a little bit I don't want that purple to just like douse the yellow color because I do want it to be mostly yellow although I, I I don't mind if they mix a little I actually do kind of want them to mix a little bit because I love when watercolors like run into one another so you can see that the purple is already kind of going into the yellow um, I just monitor it so that it doesn't overflow too much um, and now I'm doing that lime green color that is like the kiwis on the mood board and that is a distress oxide and so that one kind of um, is a little different when it reacts with water um, because it's a distressed oxide spray so I actually go back in with some really just regular lime green watercolor as well I'm using this color burst to get the orange color and fill in the last two circles um, so I'll put the mood board up at the end in the still photos but um, I would absolutely adore if anybody is super interested in and playing along and like using the mood board to inspire the colors on your layout if you do tag me and tag Sarah like on Instagram or on YouTube or whatever and we would love to see it because um, that's why we do what we do right to inspire you to scrapbook and tell your stories and create art and um, if you are inspired to use it I would love to see it 
Um, I know it kind of looks like a hot mess right now, but I promise it'll come together. I just left the open circles because I just didn't need to fill them all in with watercolor because they're going to be covered up. Um, they will be looking like solid circles when we're done. So, um, making, I guess I forgot to <laughs> make my die cut pages. So for a couple colors and then that one of course needed a, a double layer. Um, sometimes with watercolors to get the really vibrant colors, you're going to have to layer them up and make sure to, um, do layers. So now I'm going to use my glimmer hot foil machine that I got for Christmas and, um, using that folk edge die by pink fresh studio. And I don't have one of those little like scrolly uh, rotary cutters, but I do find that that's probably what would be best to cut foil. It's not really great to um, cut foil with scissors because it kind of flops around. And it's really hard to control, but I um, use this box cutter and I know it doesn't really look like it's easier um, on the video right now, but it actually was easier. So that is the way I'm going to be using to cut my foil. But when you're using the glimmer machine, they say um, you do want to kind of keep your foil pretty central to your die because um, any excess could kind of mess up the page. Although I'm only using the foil, I'm going to die cut directly around the circle. So it wouldn't matter in my case, I guess, but anyway. Um, so I put the paper on the hot pad once it warmed up and now I'm going to cover it with the gold foil, sit the die on top and then make the correct sandwich on top and turn on the timer to um, really get the foil nice and adhered. And then I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to run it through my Sizzix machine and it doesn't die cut it. It just like gives it just barely enough pressure to kind of like push it down onto the paper. And then you can see the result right here. Um, so those folk edge dies come with a really thin die that cuts out directly around the circle. Um, so that is the plan here. So I have it foiled on that folk edge die and then that really thin die is going to cut right up next to that foiled line and so um, I really love the end result and I also saw a video where they said if you put your washi tape on the foil it'll pull up the foil but I didn't experience that but maybe if it was a more solid image that would be more noticeable um, I'll try not to test it out there is that new Alta new um, tape non tacky tape or something um, that I want to try for this purpose. So, um, that took forever. I'm not going to lie. This layout took me, this might be one of the longest layouts that I've ever had to do, but it, it's worth it in the end. But I, uh, didn't show you all of the foiling because it was just repetitive and it took forever, but I do love it. And I went ahead and die cut like some fun foam. And so that's what I'm doing here is I'm backing all these circles with foam to stick them up a little bit. And then I'm going to put the wet glue down and put them on the corresponding colors. And I'm loving how that looks um, to make sure that the glue dried and none of the foam moved around. I set my um, stamping press on top of the page and it ended up really nicely also um, laying out the page flat from all of the gesso and the watercolor. Um, so I did, I think that sat overnight probably because I did work on this over the course of two days. But there we have it. Everything is glued down. And I've decided on my title. Um, I, I go in with these um, gold shiny letters, but I actually change them because they're too big. But, oh, so next we're going to add some florals um, to the watercolor circles. And so I have the celebration, that is celebration floral. It's a um, stamp between Alta New and Pink Fresh Studio. And I was going to do that solid image you can see up at the top and then it was the wrong color pink and I thought, you know what, let's make it like sketchy. So I only used the like fill in color of the floral and, and the leaf and then I'm going to do the outline in black to kind of go with the black and white photo that I had chosen. And it gives it this like, really great sketchy look um, and then I'm going to die cut it and I'm going to pair it with the greenery and a couple of the sketchy poppies from uh, Poppy Garden from the stamp market as a stamp set that I recently bought on their clearance sale. That was really amazing. And it came with all the dies. Um, so I'm going to fill in the leaves with, um, a green color. And I thought about doing like a color blocking. So this, this stamp was going to go in the pink section and the green section. Uh, but I end up just doing the same color scheme for the other groupings of florals that I do. And it works out. Um, you'll see what I mean here in a minute. Um, 
So there's that die cut flower and that's where I'm gonna set it. And now I'm gonna go in with the greenery from the poppy set. And I'm gonna do the lime green first on the solid stamp and then there's another stamp that is more detailed so i'm going to go over it with that other green that you see that alta new crisp ink and it's just a little bit darker so it doesn't really give too much of a different of a variation but just enough to make it kind of look realistic um so i uh use my stamping bug there and I'm loving how that looks and I die cut it and I get it on and then I realize like I need more contrast because I have the black around the edge of that Alta New and Pink Fresh floral. I thought wouldn't it be nice to add in some contrasting um, greenery but do it in black and white and it kind of looks like a old school like naturalist sketch of a fern and so I actually end up really loving how that looks so I look so I'll do some more black and white leaves as well as some more green leaves and um that's what I'm doing here as well as adding in a couple of those sketchy poppies with that same bright pink color and those don't have a black outline so um just kind of combining the different colors but that's why I wanted to keep stick with only a pink floral um because i didn't want it to look like they were too mismatched um and i think if i branched out and doing different colors it might but there you can see i added in some black and white in addition to the green and i'm loving how that pops off so now i'm just sticking down all of the um, photos and the florals and I just have a little cluster around my photo and then a cluster at the top left and a cluster over on the right. So it's kind of like a nice visual triangle. And I don't have the layout in front of me, but I think the title is Fiera Bend. And um, it, was a, it was a word that I found when I was like looking for a title and it's German and it means like the feeling that you are ready to enjoy your time off work when you get off of work. And so that's what we were doing. We were out with our friends after we had all worked all week. And so we were having good fear of it. And if I'm using that wrong and you speak German, just let me know. <laughs> but I, I did try to research it to see if it was like the correct word and it didn't mean like something bad. <laughs> so I don't think it does from my research, my very short online research. But um, I put the little definition down there as like a um, secondary title or a, a subtitle. And then I used the really small glitter alphas um, to put the title just because it was so long and I didn't want to split up the word and so I'm going to add in those gold little gems around the page too and that will be my finally final touch make sure you pop over to Sarah's channel and watch her video there I'm reminding you of the mood board but she did a gorgeous layout her stamping is amazing I can't wait for you to see it and make sure you check it out I'll link it down below I'll put my favorite links if you would like to shop with a cherry on top and also if you would like to see the still photos you can check me out on Instagram at delightfully crafty and I would love to see it if you are inspired to use this mood board as well thank you guys for watching bye